In my brothers and sisters, when we speak of healing the hearts, it means something has shattered, something has broken, something is damaged, something is perhaps diseased. There is a problem, basically. That's when we speak about healing hearts. I tell you one thing, this particular event, something I know about it is, just like other events, there comes a time when it is taken from a point to a very, very high point where the organization, the facilities, the registration, the advertising, the setting, and everything changes. I recall when I first started out, it wasn't as professional as it is now in the field of da'wah, generally. You used to gather people in the masjid and speak, and mashallah, the imam used to usually make us feel like we are kuffar, and then we walk out. And we used to feel like, you know what, Aish, it's hard to be a Muslim, I don't think I'm ever going to get there. And uh, I was little, we grew up a little bit, and uh, some things happened that changed everything, and one of them was Brother Ahmed Javier. I think in the Philippines as well, the da'wah moved from one point to a level of professionalism together with the videography and photography on another level altogether that actually beamed the teachings across the globe. It's a sadaqa jariya. May Allah grant him jannah. May Allah Almighty reward him for everyone who is taking the da'wah seriously, especially when it comes to technological benefit. And we ask Allah to grant each one of us a lesson because when I stand and uh, in front of everyone, I think to myself, I'm going to go very soon. When I go, how will they remember me? I pray that Allah grants us a good ending so that at least people can remember goodness. And if they don't remember you, it's not, it's not a bad thing. If people forget you within a short span of time, it's not a bad thing. For as long as your reward keeps clocking, even for a hundred and a thousand years, if no one knows your name, no problem. They won't know it. How many of you know your grandfather's grandfather? Almost nobody. Right? You know him? MashaAllah, that's amazing. That's because MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Allah has blessed you. But many of us are not as fortunate as he. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. Now, when death happens, the heart is shattered. When divorce happens, many people go through a process that requires healing of the heart. It's not an easy thing. I know nowadays people go through divorce and have a party. Have you heard of divorce parties? They are so happy that, ah, I'm divorced, yay! I couldn't wait to get out of it. You know what? Why did you get in it in the first place? And that's why my brothers and sisters don't go for massive weddings. You rather the barakah because you don't know how long it's going to last. I read an article they said in Kuwait, it was on social media, true or false, Allah knows best. They say there was a case recently, the marriage lasted three minutes, literally three minutes. They were in front of the Qadi and uh, he just solemnized everything. And as they were uh, proceeding, uh, three minutes, literally three minutes, they had an argument and this guy says, you know what? Uh, in fact, the woman herself says, I don't want this marriage anymore. And the man was the Qadi, the judge or the officiator was sitting right there. He had to cancel things, nullify things and it was over. The point I'm raising is, the heart is very delicate. Do not allow anyone ownership of it besides Allah. The heart, watch it, be careful. Don't become inclined towards things very easily. Whether it is material or anything you found on earth, even a human, be careful how much you incline. Because people say, I'm, I'm going to say this, right? It sounds strange, right? People say, I can't control it. I just love this guy so much. I have to marry him. And I just, one example, right? Or, or, this, or this woman or whoever it might be. I'm in love. I have no control. Look, I have no control. I tell you what, Allah says, initially we gave you control. You allowed it. That, that initial control you had, you allowed it to go from there. Then you lost the control and you're blaming Allah. Allah told you initially you did. You saw something, you were supposed to lower your gaze. You saw something, you were supposed to remind yourself properly about the reality. The reality is, you know what? MashaAllah. Sometimes you see a beautiful, what can I say? Motor vehicle, right? 
you see a beautiful motor vehicle, you can't afford it. Just say, mashallah, subhanallah, and walk away. That's it. There's nothing you can do. You know, nothing much. If you're lucky, you know, brother Ammar might give you a ride in it. You know, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, that's if he has one, and I don't think he does. But mashallah, one day, you know, I normally say things because one day, inshallah, we might have it. When you fly in my private jet, inshallah, that's the day I will fly in it as well. May Allah grant us ease. So when you allow the heart to incline in this particular way, you are at fault because you did not control it. And now it's out of your control. You're at fault. You have to take part of the blame. You can't say no. It's happened to all of us, myself included. We tend to attach ourselves to sometimes to people, sometimes to things. And then the heart is hurt when we are distanced from that thing or that person. The heart is hurt. We are human. It happens to us. That's why we are talking about it. We have to heal this heart. And really, my brothers and sisters, it's not easy. Allah Almighty has revealed the Quran. The Quran in it is cure for the hearts. Ya nasu qad jaatkum rabbikum. O people, a reminder or a warning has come to you from your Lord. Look at how Allah starts it. O people, a reminder or a warning has come to you from your Lord. And immediately after that, Allah says, And cure for that which is within your chest. Why cure after the reminder? Because that reminder itself will help you. You won't need to become shattered in the first place in order to be healed. The healing is one thing. But before you needed the healing, you have to have been diseased or shattered. If I'm in need, this reminder will actually take me from strength to strength, not from weakness to strength. That's if I already took heed. But again, we are human. We have moments of strength and we have moments of weakness after the strength as well. Many of us. Sometimes we feel very strong. What's the strength? I did my Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and I did my Sunnah and Nafil, and I did this, and guess what? A week later, two weeks later, I'm so lazy, I missed my Fajr, I was lazy for my Dhuhr, but you were so strong. Be careful. This is the reminder, it's come to you. You want to heal? Push yourself. Push yourself. If you don't push yourself, no one is going to push you. Fight the laziness. Tell yourself the reality is I cannot have this because it's not mine and it will not be mine. Subhanallah. I can work towards something Allah has made permissible for me and I will try it. But my main focus is paradise. If you want true cure of the heart, focus on paradise. Now focus on something that you find on earth. It's going to leave you or you will leave it. Even if you, you are, for example, if you have what you wanted, if you have certain things you wanted, one day they're going to be taken away from you. They have to be taken away from you or you will be taken away from those things because I have to go back to Allah. In all honesty, I cannot wait for the day I'm going to go back to my maker. Do you know why? If he made things that I'm crazy about, I wonder how he is, subhanallah. Do you get the point? Allah's made things that I'm crazy about. I look and I'm so, so amazed by the scene of an ocean and the greenery and the mountains and the water and sometimes the weather, mashallah, and so many other things that we consider nature, but in actual fact made by Allah. If Allah has made those things and then he's made people Every single person he's ever made is totally and absolutely unique. That is Allah. He, every person has his or her own identity and mind and thoughts and whatever else. Imagine the Creator. Allah says, Hada khalqullahi fa'aruni madha khalqalladheena min dunih. This is the creation of Allah. So show me what those besides Allah have created. Nothing. Zero. They didn't make a thing. The creation of Allah is amazing. It's so impressive. I'm standing here. Every face is different. If it was the same, 
I wouldn't know who you were. Everyone is wearing different colors. You might have a slightly similar color, but everything you're wearing is unique. Your size is different, right? Allah knows you. He loves you. He made you for a reason. And you are a test for me and I'm a test for you. Do I honor you and respect you or do I abuse this? And same applies the other way around. When I take heed and I get closer to Allah, the heart is protected before it needs healing. Protected. So Allah teaches you from the beginning, protect your heart. What do you do? Read what I sent to you, understand it, put it into practice, your heart will be safe. Why? Because my heart belongs to Allah. People can let you down. They will let you down. In fact, they shall let you down. It's up to you to decide whether the letting down was worth mending and continuing or not even mending, walking away. Sometimes people are married for 25 years. Something massive goes wrong. They go away. They walk away, literally. Whereas some people will say, no, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to make, I'm going to mend it. And that's what I would recommend. It depends what it is. Obviously, I'm just making a general thing. But you work on it. Don't just break a relation. You know why? We are taught that everyone falters. If you are going to destroy a relationship because of a mistake, we would all have to destroy nearly all of our relationships because we all make mistakes. Like I said, it depends what it is. Don't come back to me after you've done something absurd and say, did you hear? Did you hear? We better mend relation. Did you hear? Because that's not true. Sometimes the healing of the heart is in the separation. Sometimes the healing of the heart is in going your own way and never talking to that person again in your life. It will heal your heart. To block them no matter what. Sometimes when there is a haram relation, shaitan keeps coming to you and telling you, do you know what? If you leave this person now, you're going to break their heart. Well, should I break their heart or break my relation with Allah? Block, stop, break the heart and let them deal with it. It's okay. What happened? It was a haram relation. You are going to break your heart further if you keep it in. They should have known better. You cannot justify sin by saying, I'm going to break their heart if I quit it. Quit it now. Block and stop and move on. You'll help yourself and help them. Okay, so... To surrender to the decree of Allah is also part and parcel of a means of healing. You surrender. Where did I get this from? The Quran. Allah says, you be happy with what Allah has decreed and Allah Almighty will really... In fact, it's part of your belief. وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Good and bad fate is from Allah. So, I say that as part of my belief to enter the fold of Islam... I need to believe that whatever happens to me, good or bad, I'm going to surrender to it and I will be happy with it, literally. Something out of your control happened today. What are you going to do? Nothing. You can't do a thing. You have to surrender and you have to turn to Allah for healing. That's it. Allah will grant you. You say, Alhamdulillah, it could have been worse. You know, today I had planned to do something and to say something. Inshallah, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. It is to look into the Quran and speak about healing from the stories of the prophets. Because Allah Almighty speaks about why He gave us the stories of the prophets. Listen to this. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in all those stories, there are lessons for those with sound intellect. Number one. Then Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ Allahu Akbar Every time we've sent a story to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is in order to strengthen your heart. In order to strengthen your heart. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not need strengthening, but it is more for us than for anyone else. If you look at Yusuf alayhi salam story, Allah says, Ahsan al-Qasas, we are revealing to you the best of stories. Why does Allah say that? Because that story alone will heat you, heal your hearts. 
you are suffering from people being jealous against you well you need to know Allah will raise you above them it's a matter of time so be patient how do I know that the story of Yusuf alayhi salam his own brothers were jealous so sometimes a family member could become jealous of you and I the question is are you jealous of someone because many people say they jealous they jealous hang on do you suffer from jealousy as well do you easily become jealous if we deal with that we can solve a bigger problem because each one of us needs to solve our problems do not be jealous of another not at all if Allah gave them and you believe that Allah is the giver and Allah is the owner of sustenance and Allah decided and chose to give them then you having a problem with that you have a problem with Allah if Allah gave you a million and I say why I've got a problem with Allah because Allah is the one who decided who to give what am I right Allah is the one who decided who to give what and you are saying he this guy shouldn't have had it shouldn't have it and so on so jealousy that's one thing it's dealt with in the Quran in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam the struggles of life Yusuf alayhi salam a young boy very handsome very intelligent and he was thrown into a pit by his own family members what happened Allah says we are going to raise you above them be patient time is very important why because through time you will heal your heart will heal so be patient because that patience will at least take you through the period required for the heart to heal even if it's just a matter of time you know they say time heals wounds right how does it do that it's Allah you have a problem today it's a massive issue hold on calm down just push yourself through the days bear patience dhikr of Allah remember Allah a lot praise him look at the goodness you have which is very very important look at the favors of Allah upon you try to count them although you won't count all of them but try to look at them and thank Allah for them and then reach out to others who are struggling in a similar way or in any other way people who are struggling when you go out to help them it will help heal your own heart I remember someone who lost their home and they were in a tent and we reached out to this this family and we happened to help them with a makeshift home that was a little bit better than a tent they were so happy and they said you know what can we come with you and help others who were in a situation that we were in and I'm thinking to myself but they don't have the ability the financial capacity they were not speaking about finances they just wanted to come and volunteer to reach out to people and say a good word to them in order to put a smile on the faces of the heartbroken so that they themselves could heal that's what it is when you see an orphan why does the hadith say when you stroke the the uh, head of the orphan you get a reward or when you look after an orphan or a widow you get a reward why because they were so broken at some point or they may still be so broken that if you are to care for that heart and to bring a smile of reassurance to their faces Allah says we will reassure you with paradise the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says you will be with me like this in paradise it's amazing it's amazing why how did I heal I healed by helping others heal in my own small way now if that's the case don't you think the opposite is true when you break someone you shall be broken done did you hear that when you break someone when you are when you think you're petty or you want to swear abuse hurt cause depression in the cases of people you keep mocking and that's why be careful of your jokes sometimes people are not strong enough to take a joke you joke about them about their appearance about their intelligence whether it's school college wherever it may be be careful when you make people feel low and belittled the day is coming what you did to others shall be done unto you it's there's no way that you're going to get away so we're talking of healing the heart don't break others lives you save your own heart you'll save it be happy Allah's blessed you with a lot with intelligence with wealth with authority with good looks whatever else it may be just be humble there are others who have far more than you and they're humble build yourself you know why every time you build yourself your heart is strengthened when it's strengthened when the crack comes and it has to come when the hit comes and it has to come 
it will be cushioned because you have a connection with Allah. Yusuf alayhi salam, did he ever give up? No. Did his father ever give up? No. His brothers would never have believed that a day will come when we are going to be driven back to this man to beg for food from the guy whom we thought was dead. It took them a long time to figure out who he was. And then another thing taught in the Quran that is amazing. Learn to forgive as much as you can. Let go. You know, I'm talking of myself. I've tried this and I've worked on it for years, for years, just to let go. No matter what they've done, how they did it, when they did it, what the magnitude it was, the negativity against you, be it a comment, be it an action, be it something major or minor, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's gone. It's over. It's forgiven. Even before it's done. You might have heard me say this before. It's not easy. Why? You have to have a lot of confidence in your connection with Allah. That you know what? Allah is in charge. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Nothing. I'll smile. I remember one day I was treated unfairly. Very unfairly. I just looked and I smiled. I said, you know what? It's okay. Oh, they were surprised. This guy is not even irritated. Not even irked. It irritates them more. Because you know what? They tried to do you down and you were not. No, I'm not going to go down. It's my Lord. He's in charge. Someone told me something and I said, you know what? If Allah wants, this will happen. If Allah does not want, it will not happen. MashaAllah. So we have to learn to make life easy for others and Allah will protect us. You make life difficult for someone, it's going to come. When you suffer heartbreak, you suffer something really, really big that you are struggling with. Ask Allah to help you. And then ask yourself, have I ever wronged someone? Important question. Have I ever wronged someone? Do you know why? Did you make someone cry? Do you think there were people in your life who might have cried to Allah about you and said, this person's harassing me so much, oh Allah? Is there? If there is or there was, you need to go and make peace with them. Then you'll get peace. That's why one of the ways of healing your heart when it's broken. You see, there are two things. Your heart is broken sometimes because someone broke it. Something happened. But sometimes you broke it yourself. Sometimes you are the one who, was so, who pretended like you were so strong, but you were so weak. You, know, you knew you were weak, but you kept on bashing, kept on attacking, kept on abusing, kept on belittling. So it came back to you. And what happened? You struggled. You struggled as a result of you making others struggle. The healing of it is to get closure. How do you get closure? You go to them and you say, look, I was young. I was naive. I was really not thinking what I was doing. I really caused you a lot of trouble. Today, I'm standing in front of you saying, please forgive me. Please pray for me. Forgive me. If you have the guts to do that, it will bring about closure. It will bring about a coolness of the heart that you never imagined you would get because there is an outstanding debt against that person. And then when someone comes to you, now this is the other way around, seeking forgiveness, as far as possible, let it go. You don't, you don't have to announce it to them all the time, but between you and Allah, let it go, it's okay. I tell you why. I want to ask you a question. What is the true focus of a believer? I said it a bit earlier. Paradise, right? Paradise. That's the true focus. The true focus of a believer is paradise. We believe when you get to paradise, you will get that which no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard. It hasn't even crossed your heart or your mind. You get everything, everything completely. As you think of it, it's yours. Jannah. If you get paradise, if you were told that Here's your paradise. We are giving you entry in, but we have one condition. This is just by way of example. The condition is your worst enemy on earth is going to be your neighbor. Would you want to go? What's the true answer? There's only one answer. You have no option. You have to go. Because where are you going to choose to go? No, no, no. Just send me to Jahannam. I'd rather go there. Is that what you're going to say? You have to go to Jannah. You're going to say, oh Allah, whoever is next to me or in front of me or wherever else it might be, I don't care. For as long as I'm there, I've got what I, was, what I worked for all my life. Once you are in it, you know what? You realize if you have what you wanted completely, 
What loss are you at if someone else also has it? What did you lose? Nothing. So if you lost nothing, let it be. May Allah grant us Jannah. May Allah grant people who wronged us also Jannah. That's not an easy Amin. But inshallah, so what? If they get it and I get it, I mean, if I got it, I don't care who else gets it for as long as I got it. I, I really don't care who else gets it. So I say, oh Allah, those who don't like us, those who hate us, those who have harmed us, forgive them, grant them Jannah. Grant them Jannah. Do you know why? I need, my, my heart is too precious for me to hold in it negative things. I, it'll be broken, man. It'll be broken. I'm just a human. Then I want to tell you one other thing. When people have said bad things about you, or nowadays on social media, people make little clips. They talk about each other, right? Sometimes on WhatsApp, sometimes in groups, sometimes. The urge to know what someone said about you is also a heartbreaker. If you can build yourself, I don't even want to know. One day, someone told me, and this happens often, it happened recently also. Someone told me, you know, there's a video where so-and-so said something about you. And I know this guy. And I'm like, oh, they said, yeah, we sent it to you. I said, thanks for telling me. To this day, I don't know what he said. I really, and I don't want to, I don't have the urge to listen to this long video all about me. I don't even want to know. Do you know why? When I say, may Allah grant him Jannah, it's okay. Because if he gets Jannah through my dua, I'm going to be there before him. And if I'm in Jannah, I don't care who else is there. You follow what I'm saying? But if I'm going to listen to what he said about me, it's going to create it's going to a mess in my heart. I'm going to be lost. I won't have concentration in salah. I won't be able to eat properly, sleep properly. When I look at him, I'll be upset and it's going to upset me. I'm going to think who else knows about what he said. And whenever I look at anyone, I'm going to be embarrassed to come out in public because of what someone else said about him. Like this, I don't even know. So I don't care. I look at everyone. Salam alaikum guys. Everyone okay? I have a smile and I'm genuine. You know why? I don't know what you know about me and what you don't know about me. Because I myself don't know what they know about me. And I don't even know what... I don't even know what has happened because I didn't even probably do nearly everything that you think I did. Khalas. It's a crazy world. It's a crazy, crazy world. Protect your heart. Understand where we are. We're living in this particular way. You have the Quran. I can't go through all the stories, but let me tell you. Yusuf alayhi salam, they accused him. The wife of this Aziz, this leader, accused him wrongly of trying to misbehave with her. What did he do? He took it in his stride. Wallahi, do you know what he said? Oh Allah, I'd rather go to jail than to do this. So Allah says, okay, go to jail. So he went to jail. He enjoyed his time there. Do you know that? Because his attitude was right. That's why he enjoyed his time there. He said, look, I'm in prison. I'm, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm going to wait for the help of Allah. I'm going to check, seize the opportunity. He got in. He saw two guys sitting there. He says, hey guys, what's happening, man? They said, you look like a good man. We've been having some dreams. We want you to translate, interpret them. He says, okay, let's go for it. When they told him the dreams, he started by saying, you know what? We worship Allah. Myself and my forefathers, we are blessed. We worship one, the maker alone, no one else. Many people don't know, many people don't, are not thankful and so on. And I invite you to worshiping Allah alone. That's what he said to the people in the prison. What did he do? He seized the opportunity. He, they didn't cry and wipe their tears. My heart is broken. I'm in jail for nothing. They accused me. You know what? I didn't even do all of this. I really didn't. He didn't say all of that. Not once. Not once did he say that. Subhanallah. You know and I know that he was falsely accused. He was excited. He said, never mind. It's okay. I'm not the first guy it happened to. I'm not going to be the last guy it happened to. Here I am in prison. How many innocent people are in prison? In some countries, most of the innocent are in jail and the crooks are outside. Yeah, in some countries. See, I heard it true. I better ask you, which country? But anyway, never mind. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, you can't. If something is, has happened, khalas, take it in your stride. You bashed another car and you got a phone home to say, you know what, I made a big accident. You have to do it whether you like it or not. Hey, don't tell my father. Don't tell. You have to tell them, break the ice, don't worry. It's okay, you're a human, you bash the car. But when you bash it three days in a row, then you got a problem. So Yusuf alayhi salam, he spoke to these guys and he told him, you know what, you are going to be set free. You are going to be executed according to the dreams you've had. When you're set free and you go into these, the, the, the king's palace, you must remember me. If an opportunity arises, talk about me. I'm an innocent man, so on. Allah gave him that opportunity after some time because Allah made him forget for a time. All of that, 
It was okay. How long did he spend in prison? A long time. Innocent man. He used the time constructively. When Corona came, well, thankfully it's not there anymore. What did we do? We used the time constructively. That's it. We were forced to do things and we did them the way we were told to do them in most cases. But if you don't adjust to what's going on, you're going to have a problem because you're going to be fighting with yourself and fighting with everyone else. Don't. Protect your heart. Protect your mind. Very important. I say these are the two most important organs. Your heart and your mind. Don't give them to anyone. They belong to Allah. It's okay. Everything else is fine. I need to train myself to look at things and to understand things. Yusuf alayhi salam comes out one day. Did he have hatred? No, he didn't. Not at all. Not at all. He forgave the guy for forgetting him because that wasn't a crime in the first place. It was just a human thing, forgetfulness. Secondly, he didn't go to the king and make a big deal about this and that. He let, he, he let it go. He let it go. These women themselves sought forgiveness from him. You know what? You were right. We were wrong. We are sorry. He said, it's okay. Leave it be. And then what happened? When the brothers came along one day, as soon as they came in and said, you know what? Are you Yusuf? He says, yes. You know what you did. You know what you did. Didn't you? Don't you? Yes. They said, well, will you forgive? He says, you are forgiven completely. No retribution today. In fact, you guys go home, bring our father and come back. Let's see what we can do. He forgave. When you forgive, you actually heal your own heart. Release it. Let go. Sometimes the fact that you're holding, I'm never going to forgive this person. It's fine. You're a human. We think that way too. It's human to do that too. It's not wrong. They must have done something really bad to you. But slowly get yourself used to saying, you know what? In my heart, forgiven. But I don't want to tell them that. That's also fine. Because if I say, don't worry, you're forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. They'll come and dagger me one day. They'll kill me, man. And they'll say, then in, in Akhirah, they'll say, but didn't you tell us that you were, we were forgiven? So we just killed you. I mean, that's a bit absurd, but I'm giving you the extreme example, right? So you don't, maybe you don't know to tell them, but in your heart you say, it's okay. I, no, you know what? I need to continue with my life. Life is very short. I'm working towards paradise. This is a detour. I don't want to be on this detour anymore. Let me get onto the path. Let me move straight and let me keep going. Subhanallah. Now we get to the same Quran. There are verses in the Quran. If repeated and if read, they will help you heal your heart. What are they? Starting number one, Ayatul Kursi. Number two, Surah Al-Fatiha. These are verses of the Quran that are powerful. They have in them cure. The Quran, the whole of it has cure. People tell me, can I read this a thousand times? Can I read this 10,000 times? Can I read this 125,000 times? And I say, you know what's the best thing for you to do? You don't know the diseases you have. You don't know which verses will impact which diseases and cure you and rid you of those diseases. So the best thing for you to do is to read the Quran from the beginning to the end as often as you can and keep going and you won't know that there were diseases that you had that were cured without you knowing that you had them. One day in the hereafter you'll find out. So what's the best thing? Wallahi, my brothers, my sisters, the best thing is to read the Quran from cover to cover as often as you can. Slowly, even if it's a passage, a verse, two verses, five verses. And I want to tell you something powerful about the Quran and its healing. Many of us are busy. Here in Hong Kong, I'm sure you guys are very busy. I mean, it's a hub, economic hub, and it's a very advanced place and so on. Everybody's very busy walking around. Yesterday, we jumped onto the tram to see how it felt. And I felt like I myself was a tram. And I'm looking at all these people, everyone is in their own world, subhanallah, everyone in their own world. And a lot of them are just looking at their devices and that's it. Device, everyone's on their phones and mashallah, subhanallah. Guess what? Guess what? If you were to tell someone, I want you to read one page of Quran a day, they'll tell you, I don't have time. Am I right? It's a common answer. You might say that now you're a human. I mean, just admit it. I know you're a Muslim, but you might say, I don't really have much time. I'll read half a page. Don't have time. The Quran itself has in it so much of blessings and barakah that it will make the time once you decide to give it time. When you don't have time in your day, one way to create time is to set aside a time to read the Quran. See what happens and how much time you have. That's the miracle of the Quran. Trust me, 
Everyone who tried this has come back and said, you're so right. You don't have time. There's no barakah in your day. I tell you what, start off with two things. Salatul Fajr is a must. And immediately after that, no sleeping, read half a page of Quran, then start your day. I promise you, you will come and say, I don't know how, I've got so much time in my day. There we go. Guarantee. Come back to me next year at the peak, if it didn't work. And even if it worked. I thought just now we'd have no one next, next year. May Allah bless you all. May Allah grant us barakah and goodness. The Quran has a lot. It's up to us to know. Many times we have our hearts that are not protected. The reason is we don't know which surahs to read. I told you two. Which ones did I say? Ayatul Kursi and Suratul Fatiha. Can I tell you a few more? The last two surahs of the Quran and if you can, the last three. The Mu'awwidat and Surat Al-Ikhlas. So, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Protection. You will be protected, I promise you. But you have to read it every morning and every evening. How long will it take you? Five minutes. Not more than five minutes. You have to invest that five minutes to read those surahs. Otherwise, you will not be protected the way you need to be protected. And people say, well, you know, I'm at the time... Some women might say, I'm at the time of the month where I can't read. Who said you can't read? This is dua. This is, this is, these are verses you read throughout the, the year. Come rain, come sunshine. You read them. There's no day of the year you can't read these verses. No day. And this is according to all schools of thought. So even if you say, no, I follow a different school of thought, you know, it's fine. We follow the school of thought that is the Quran. That same Quran, it tells us. So my brothers and sisters, this is the Qur'an. It has in it cure. If you pick up verses like the praise of Allah in the Qur'an and you see those verses and read them, they are amazing. The verses of protection. Indeed, my protector is Allah, the one who has revealed the book and he is the one who safeguards the righteous. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِأَعْدَائِكُمْ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ نَصِيرًا What a powerful verse. What are we saying? Allah is the one who knows your enemies better than you know them yourself. And Allah is sufficient as a protector and Allah is sufficient as a disposer of my affairs. What a powerful dua. رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ رَبِّي أَنْ يَحْضُرُونَ O oh Allah, O oh my Lord, I seek protection in you from the whispers of the devil and I seek protection in you from the devil coming in my presence. What will happen? The devil won't come in your presence. Were you serious about this dua? Were you serious about this verse? Do you believe in it? Well then, how can you be affected? And the last thing is, the Quran teaches us to make dua. Dua is supplication. Any time of the day and night, the day or night, you raise your hands, you make dua to Allah. You ask Allah, what do you want to ask Him? Ask Him to grant you a healing. Ask Him to heal your heart and to protect it. You know, there is a powerful dua in the sunnah. Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma ya, mu ya muqallib al qulub. O oh Allah, who is the turner of the hearts, turn my heart towards your deen. Turn my heart towards obedience. Turn my heart to do the right things. If Allah turns your heart in the right way, it will be protected. And that is Allah. He gives it to you. May Allah Almighty bless every one of us. Just like I noticed the crackle at the beginning, I noticed it was dealt with. So I want to thank the, the brothers doing the sound, thank you very much. Uh, you uh, know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. We enjoyed the talk. I enjoyed the talking, mashallah. And the reason why I enjoyed it is as I'm speaking, I'm telling myself, this is a reminder for you. This is a reminder for you. This is a reminder for you. And wallahi it is. Remember one thing, we are all the same. You might see a guy standing in front of you. He might be the imam of the haram. And he'll come and stand and give you a talk. Wallahi, he would be going through struggles similar to yours and mine. Because you know what? He's also a human being. So don't ever think Allah hates you. Allah doesn't like you. Why? Because I'm going through struggles. The best of the best of the best. 
went through bigger struggles than yours and mine. They never doubted Allah. Keep going. I want to end with a story. Last night we took a, we took a walk. We walked here and there and we caught the tram, like I said. Mashallah, we went onto a boat. We saw a six minute light display somewhere with the buildings. They were telling us it happens here and there. And they said that uh, it was a nice scene and whatever. Uh, mashallah, it was good. On our way back, we stopped. We stopped for some ice cream post midnight somewhere. Sorry, we were only boys, by the way. And uh, a guy comes up to me and he says, you know, I'm going through, a v he, said, he was excited to see me. Obviously, he must be shocked. And I was in disguise, but you know, never mind. They, 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 I can't disguise my beard. So he comes up to me and he says, can I see you for a minute? Can I speak to you for a little while if you don't mind? So I came out of the little place we were having our ice creams and we walked out. And uh, he tells me, you know, pray for me, please. I have a problem. I have something. And he explained to me what it was. And he says, I was just considering leaving Islam. And I see you. He says, just yesterday and the day before, considering leaving Islam. Because, but why? Because Allah's not listening to my dua. These are his words last night. Allah's not listening to my dua. And I don't know how to, what to do and how to do it. I said, my brother, let's ask Allah. Oh Allah, help this man. Oh Allah, grant him ease. And whatever the issue was. I said, my brother, Allah has heard you. He has responded to you. He has forgiven you. He has whatever else. But shaitan is coming to you to try and make you think that you are not forgiven. And the fact that you saw me is for you a sign. For me, I just came randomly to have a, it's called a McFlurry, by the way. Now you know where we were, right? It's quite a nice thing. You can try the Oreos one. It's not so bad. We had extra biscuits we brought to actually just sprinkle on the top, you know. Masha, is it a good thing? Have you tried it before? Yeah, there we, yeah, you have. If you have tried it before, put up your hands. Allah, the whole of Hong Kong's had it, man. Mashallah, mashallah, okay. Inshallah, inshallah. Now, I, I wanted to try the Sunday, but it was a Friday. So, alhamdulillah, the reason I mention this is because sometimes you, Allah knows that you are thinking this and thinking that and He wants to tell you, hey, you don't just quit the faith simply because you think things are not going your way. Be patient. What did we tell you earlier? Time, time. Keep going, keep praying. That's the time you pray. In fact, if anything, Allah loves you the most because... When you had everything, you forgot Allah. Allah says, let me take a few things away. Let me, let me let you go through a heartbreak so that in order to heal it, you find us and you come back to us and you cry to us and you pray to us and you become a person whom you never were in your relationship with us. And we love that condition more than the condition you were in before your heart break. So if your heart broke, if your heart break, has brought you closer to Allah. Trust me, it was a good thing, but come out of it quickly because if you're going to stay there, shaitan's going to say, right, we've got a customer and a client and he's going to make you lose hope. May Allah Almighty grant us ease.